Welcome to Brent's Anime Recommendation Corner, where I talk about an anime that I love, and today I'm talking about Harlock Saga. Ooh. Ah. This is an OVA about space pirate Captain Harlock, a legendary anime character, a space pirate captain. Um, and the adventure that he, he goes on uh, in, in space. And one of the things that's interesting about um, Harlock is that it is in this very big, bold space opera universe. Um, and this story takes opera to its, its extreme because it is also retelling of the legend of the Rheingold and the ring uh, and the, the Wagner opera, all that kind of stuff. Yes, it is an adaptation wow. of that using Captain Harlock. Oh, uh, I might need to see this. Though. It's really cool. <laughs> Um, oh. and so you get and it's very much like all of the lazy Matsumoto character designs every girl has hair down to her ankles um, you know uh, all that stuff but in this big space opera you know spaceships running around kind of a universe um, and I love it for it's boldness um, I love it for how it does manage to integrate stories of the Rheingold uh, and uh, and that whole thing, which, by the way, goes back way before Wagner. Like, that is a mm -hmm. classic Norse myth that he yeah. reworked. Um, and so it's really cool and really interesting. You get to see a Totoro. You get to see a, a lot of classic Harlock characters. As is typical for the Matsumotoverse, Lazyverse, um, there is no, like, one timeline for all of these characters. You know, every story is basically reusing them and reworking them and, and such. So don't worry about, oh, I saw this character die in Galaxy Express or whatever. It's fine. Um, they're just kind of reworking all those themes. Um, and it's this really cool thing because one of the things I love about these kinds of stories, especially like space opera, is when they're able to kind of push the boundaries of their genre and add some fantastical elements to it. Um, where it's not necessarily fantasy fantasy, it's just science can be sufficiently advanced to feel like magic. Um, and so there's it's crazy stuff in here. What's even better about it is that, um, for example, in original Harlock, uh, there's a character called uh, Mime, as you might know. Um, um, and Mime, if I recall, um, and I'm having a really difficult time looking this up right now because Mime uh, uh, is also mime, which is not very helpful. Um, <laughs> um, let's try that. Marcel, um, Marcel. Hey, it's Mime. Hey. No, he's a mime. <laughs> um, uh, there we go. Um, which is a reference to Mimir, um, a, a, a Norse god of, of knowledge and wisdom. And so um, that character in Harlock is kind of a reference back to that, uh, which then works back into the whole Norse mythology around the ring and the Rhine gold. Um, so big space opera, uh, space opera adventure, neat sort of tie-in to mythology, uh, and definitely thinking through a lot of those, uh, th those things and trying to wrap everything together um, in a really entertaining way. And um, even better... Um, uh, music by Kaoru Wada, uh, Ooh. known for doing Inuyasha, Inuyasha. um, a yeah. bunch Ooh. of other things, Princess Tutu, Samurai 7, um, yep. Akashur and Sins, um, and do I have that? No, I do not. Um, and also Ninja Scroll, by the way, from back in the day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I, as you know, as we pointed out, um, this is based on an original. Leiji Matsumoto manga. Like, this isn't just they spun this off. Like, Matsumoto did work these themes into his, his manga storylines. Um, it also, I should point out, is unfinished. Uh, Matsumoto has never finished this storyline. So the anime version kind of reworks the story in its own way and kind of comes to its own sort of conclusion at the end. Um, but it's not a, a, um, kind of a necessarily a traditional uh, conclusion, which actually works quite well for a a space opera version of an old Norse myth, uh, which I, I, I like quite a bit. 
Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, it is English dubbed uh, as well as subbed. Uh, just a really cool, cool little thing. OBA.